Thank you, Nancy. I now call Stu Leonard, Jr., David Tomchik, and Dr. Leahy to come forward for the conferral of the honorary degree. Stu Leonard, Jr., through hard work and ingenuity, you have grown your family business into what has been recognized as the world's largest dairy store by Ripley's Believe It or Not. Beginning with a single store, your company has expanded to include four farm fresh food stores and nine wine stores. As president and CEO, you oversee day-to-day -day operations and have found that a hands-on approach works best. Your customers recognize and greet you as you walk through the store's famous winding aisle. Fortune Magazine named Stu Leonard's one of the 100 best companies to work for. Much of the success emanates from your philosophies on customer service and team member development. You have engraved your company's policy, the customer is always right, on five foot slabs of rock by the front of each store. In recognition of your commitment to entrepreneurship, dedication to customer satisfaction, and longstanding community to support, Quinnipiac University is pleased to confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters on this ninth day of May 2015. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Dr. Stu. It's now my pleasure to introduce our newest alumnus and commencement speaker, Stu Leonard, Jr. Hey, good morning, everybody. Congratulations to the class of 2015. I'm excited for you. Um, you know, this is my first commencement address I've ever given today. And I'm honored to be here at Quinnipiac. <laughs> but before I came, I met a group of you students and the deans, and we all got together, and I said, what do I say? What should I do? And you know what came out of it? is if you go to hashtag Stu Loves Q U, guess what? Everybody gets a free ice cream cone who came here today, okay? <laughs> I, I walked up to Quinnipiac and I came away giving everybody free ice cream cones, so. Uh, anyway, I, I, I just wanted, wanted to, uh, I was thinking, what do you say to everybody like this? I was sitting in your chair uh, a little over 30 years ago and I was wondering, you know, there's no bolts of lightning that hit me over the years. There's no great ideas, you know, that came from, from the sky and landed on me. But I was thinking there's a few things I wish I did earlier. And I just wanted to share those with you. The first one that I wanted to share with you is to say yes more often. There's so many opportunities. You guys are all bright, young students here. So many opportunities will come in front of your windshield every day. Embrace them, you know, say yes. And when I just got out of business school and I was working at the store, I got a phone call from Tom Malone, who was the president of Millican Textiles down in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He said, Stu, we're having a quality conference. Tom Peters, who had just finished the book In Search of Excellence, was speaking there. He said, would you come and speak? Guess what I said? No. And he said, Stu, you'll learn a lot. You'll, you'll be with some great other people. Come on down. He said, I'll be your coach. You only have to talk 20 minutes. So I said, ah, that's not too bad. And I said, yes. And I went down to Spartanburg. I walked into the room the night before my speech. It was a ballroom. I was like, ooh, I forgot to ask how many people were going to be in attendance. And I realized it was hundreds, and, and I was so nervous. And I, got up the next, and, and I got up the next morning, and I walked in with my slides. And the guy who was there running the program looked at one of my slides, and he said, who took these? And I said, I took them. You know, I went around 
our store and took pictures and I brought him down and he said to me, these are the most unprofessional slides I've ever had to work with. <laughs> and he turned and walked and went backstage. That's not what you call a pep talk, you know? <laughs> I was like so nervous. <laughs> and so the next, you know, I get up and I give my speech, it's 20 minutes and I come walking off the stage and this guy's over there now, he's got a big smile on his face. His hand is out like this and he looks at me and he says,